This is the InDesign article demo. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to My PVCC, and I already have mine open. And once we open it, I'd like for us to open Canvas. Once we're in Canvas, I'd like for us to open our typography class, and we will go down to week four, our module, and we will open our InDesign article demo. I'd like for us to right click on that demo and save link as. I'm going to save it to our desktop. Now it's a zip file and we will have to open the zip file. Now I'm going to minimize my window here and I'm going to double click on my article demo and I should have a folder that should have all of my files to work on this project. Now I'd like for us to open the PDF right now and inspect what we will be doing. What we will be doing is we'll be adding images and text to several pages. We'll be making a spread, which is two pages joined together. We'll be numbering the pages as we can see at the bottom, and we will be making a table at the end. We will also be making quotes and paragraph styles and character styles, and we'll also be text wrapping. So you can see the text is wrapping around image, and I'll show you guys how to make masters. All right, so we can X out of that. And if you'd like to, you can refer to the article example right here. But before we go to the article example, I'd like for us to open, what I'd like for us to do is open InDesign down here, and I'd like for us to hit our Command Option, Control Shift if you're on a Mac, or Control Alt Shift if you're on a PC. It's going to say startup alert, delete InDesign preference files. And I'm going to say yes. Once you're done doing that, you can open up your article example and we can inspect it. I wanted to give you guys this file so that if you have any troubles, you can inspect the files. All right, so we're gonna create a new document and I'm gonna X out of this. And I'm gonna go File, New, or Command N to open a new document. And we're gonna to go to Print off to the side here and we are gonna open it in inches. And I'm gonna make it eight by 10.5. Eight inches width by 10.5. And I'm going to make it four pages, like the original document. I'm going to make them facing pages so I have spreads. And I'm going to set up four columns, like the original document. We're going to set up margins. But on our margins, we're going to unlock it so that the bottom has a little bit more space. I'm going to set it at 0.75. The 0.75 will give us space for our auto page numbering. And let's go down to the bottom here and look at bleed and slug. Now slug is for us to add additional information for the printer, but bleed will allow us to make images or text or um, color to go off the edges of the paper. In this case, we're gonna be making a colored background for pages two and three. So I'd like for us to add some bleed and we are gonna add 0.25. And you can preview it if you'd like. And you can see I have my bleed marks. I have my margins that are a little wider on the bottom and I can go to create. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to change our workspace. Instead of essentials, I'd like for us to be in typography. Once we're over in this space, what I'd like for us to do is go to pages and kind of look at our settings. If I go to my workspace, I can change my panel options up at this drop-down menu, and I can change my masters to be instead of small view to medium view, and if I want to change the size of my pages, I can make those from medium to large. And I go OK. And they should be a little bit larger. That makes them more, a little more visible. Next thing I want to do is I want to add our guides to our master. So double click on your master. And it should open the master. And if anybody doesn't understand what a master is, if you didn't have computer graphics, or an introduction to InDesign, everybody should know that what you do in a master affects the pages that you're working on. 
Um, it allows you to set up guides or page numbering or colors or attributes that you want to add to the pages. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add some auto page numbering. Next thing I'd like for us to do is to add our ruler guides. So let's go to layout, create guides. And I want us to create four rows and I'm going to have it do within the margins and you can preview it. It says three. We have to make this four. And we're trying to make a grid like format. And we hit OK. So we can see that since I've done it on the master, it has affected all the other pages. Now, if somebody wants to look at specifically page one, if you hit command zero on your keyboard or control zero, it will allow you to view it on the page. Now, if you want to view a spread, let's go to this next page, you hit command option zero and it will center the spread so that you can view it in your window. If you're on a PC, it would be control alt zero. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our masters, double click, make sure you're there. What we're going to do is we're going to add our page numbering. Now we want to auto page number these. So it's going to be a little bit different than what you normally do when you manually add a page number. So what I'd like for us to do is grab our type tool off on the left side. We're going to drag out a box below the text box in the margin. And we're going to use our ruler guides and we're going to make it right there. The first thing I'd like for us to do is to insert a special character. Now, you, if you right click, you can insert a special character here. We can go to markers and add current page number. We can do it there or we can go to type, insert character, go to markers and go to current page number. You can hit right click and do the same thing, or you can go up to type. Either way, it's fine with me. I think right clicking is much easier. I also want to add an M space in there. The M space is equal to the capital M of the letter forms. Also an N space is equivalent to the spacing of a letter N. So let me put an M space in there. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say insert white space and I'm going to say M space. Next, I'm going to type out Fader. That is the name of the magazine that we are going to be making. Next thing I'd like for us to do is select the type, and I'd like for us to change it to Gil Sands. Now, I know everybody's Gil Sands isn't the same, so I'd like for us to hit the Gil Sands Nova, because that's the typeface used in Adobe Fonts. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to color Fader. I'm going to make it a pink. If we go up to our drop down menu at the top here, we can grab our swatches or we can go to the swatch panel over here and grab our colors. I want it to be pink, but I want to create a new color pink. So I'm going to add a new color pink. I'm going to change it. I'm going to double click on it. And I can either slide my uh, bar here and create a color that way. And I'm going to create a pink that way or I'm going to add a new one, and on this one, I'm going to choose a Pantone. So I'm going to go to Pantone Uncoded, and I'm going to scroll down and pick out a pink that feels close to what I'm using. There we go. The next step I'd like for us to do on the fader here is I'd like for us to select the type Notice it's very close to where I might place type in these paragraph columns. So I want to make this page numbering a little further away. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go to baseline shift, which is right here. And we're going to decrease the points to about eight. And I'm going to go OK. And that should be about where I want my page numbering. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my black arrow key off to the side. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to copy and paste it. And I'm going to put it over here on the right side for the page numbering on the right side for my second page. And what I'm going to do is cut and paste fader. I'm going to X out of it and I'm going to copy and paste it. Now, if it's easier for you to type it in, that's fine. Again, notice that I don't have my M space and I'm going to 
enter my M space right there. Now I can do that by going to type at the top and entering white space and hitting M space, or I can right click, I can go to insert white space and go to M space. So there we go. What I want us to do next is select all of our type and then make sure it's right aligned. And that should give us our auto page number. Now, if we go inspect our pages and we go to page one, and then we go to page two, you'll see that they have their respective page numbers. Now you can also go down to here to get your pages. For example, that will give me page four, that will give me page one. Uh, and you can scroll through these the same way that you would scroll through a book. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do on our master is we're gonna make a new master with columns on it. So let's double click on our A, and what we're gonna do is go to this drop down menu on the right side, and we're gonna go to new master. And we're gonna make it B, but we're gonna make it based on master A, so that it will have the attributes of master A, meaning the page numbering, and then we'll add something to it. What I'd like for us to do is to take our type tool. Again, remember you can hit type. Again, remember you can hit T on your keyboard to grab your type tool. And then we're gonna click and drag out and make our text boxes. Now these should snap to place because we are in InDesign and it's set to snap which is a good thing because we're trying to make this as accurate as possible. Now make sure that they reach the edges of the box. Now I notice one of mine is not correct. Is everybody seeing that? And I can move it in. All right. So once I have my text boxes here, you can see me scroll my arrow key over there. Now, if I'm on my type tool and I hit my command key or my control key, if I'm on a PC, I can just scroll over them and it gives me my black arrow key, which is nice because then I can do what I need to do is select the box that I want. Now, in the case of this particular spread that I'm making for my master, I wanna link these columns. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our black arrow key I'm going to grab my black arrow key and I'm going to select that. And notice if I select the type, uh, select that box at the bottom there, that I get a little link key right here or a chain link. That means that I'm linking these two text boxes together. Now, it doesn't show me that they're linked other than this little note right here telling me that they're linked. Now, if you want to see if they're linked, you go to View, you go to Extras, and you go to Show Text Threads. So it will show me what is threaded. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our master B right here. We're gonna click on master B. We're gonna drag it to our documents two and three to that corner and wait for it to create a double page so that we can drop it and make those affect both pages two and three. So if I go to my B column here and I take off my guides in my columns, which is just command semicolon, you can see that I have these text boxes. Now, I can't access them because they are locked. They're placeholders. And for me to link any other type, I'm gonna have to unlock them. Um, and I'm going to make new text boxes on these blank pages, and I'm gonna unlock these text boxes so that we can link them together. All right, so what I wanna do first is go to page one, and we can hit Command-0 to or Control-0 to get us to page 1. I'm going to put my guides and columns back on uh, by hitting Command-Semicolon or Control-Semicolon. And we're going to grab our Type tool, or you can hit just T on your keyboard, and we're going to drag out a text box. The next thing I want you to do is to go to page 4, and we're going to drag out a text box there as well. On this text box right here, what I'd like for us to do is to make this text box have three columns. 
So if you're not on, if you're on your type tool and not your paragraph tool, make sure you're selected on your paragraph here. We're going to make it have three columns. And you should see these little columns appear. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to unlock this master. Now this master that we're seeing here, and I'm going to show you real quick, this master right here that we're looking at is locked. And what we have to do to unlock it is we have to hit Command and Shift, and we should be able to unlock that. Now, if I want to link this with my text box on text box one, I can easily click it here and link it here. Is everybody kind of seeing that? Now, if you want to do it backwards, meaning I want to link this text box with these, just make sure that these are unlocked because otherwise it will go column by column. So what we're going to do next is we're going to click here. And notice that when it links, it grabs a link key. Now, if I were to grab, and I want to link this last column with, and I'm going to grab that little box at the bottom, bottom right corner, and I'm going to thread it to this one. Notice I get a link, but notice down here, I get what looks like a little beginning of a paragraph or kind of a right angle shape. And I'm going to show you, I can click right here and it will place it right in a in a column, in a new box. Are you guys seeing it placing in a new text box? And I could do another text box, et cetera, et cetera. I'm gonna hit Command Z. Command Z or Control Z will take us back. And I'm going to just link it to this box. So now all of my text is linked or threaded together. Is everybody seeing that? Wonderful. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna place text into our text box. And since our text is threaded, we can go to page one, and I'm gonna hit my command zero so that I can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna put my grab my type tool, I'm gonna to put my cursor right where I made my text box, and I'm going to place text. Now, if you're on a PC, you hit control D, and if you're on a Mac, you hit command D. Now you can go to File, Place, and then you'll get Command D. I think any designer should know Command D or Control D to add information. So we're gonna add our article, and this is our text, and it should already thread all of our text throughout the article. Is everybody seeing that? Wonderful. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna place color on two and three. So I'm gonna click on my two and three, I'm going to hit my command option zero, or if you're on a PC, you can hit control alt zero, and we'll get this page. And what I'd like for us to do is to go to our layers. We're going to generate a new layer and we're going to add a color to this. So I'm going to hit new layer here, and I'm going to orient this layer below layer one, and I'm going to make a box. And so what I'd like for us to do is to grab our rectangle tool here. We can click into open space, just click once, and you should get options for what your height and width are. Since I made my pages eight by 10.5, we're gonna make this 16 in width because we're doing the spread, but we're gonna add 0.5, so it's 16.5. That gives us 0.25 bleed around the whole spread. Then if I go to my height, we know that my height is 10.5, so I'm going to make it 0.5 bigger, which is 11. I'm going to hit OK. Now there's my box. And you can use your arrow keys to kind of line it up with the other box, with the, the bleed marks. And I've done that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some color. I'm going to go to my swatches here. And I'm going to go to my blue color, because I want it to be blue. Except I'm going to create a new one. So I'm going to go to New Swatch down at the bottom here on my swatches. And I'm going to double click on it and it gives me options. Now I could easily just go here and go to preview and have a light blue. But for the case of us being designers, I'd like for us to go to our Pantone. I want us to go to our uncoded CMYK and I'd like for us to choose a blue color. And we're just gonna pick a blue that looks close there. All right, then I'll hit okay. And that looks pretty visible. The next thing I'd like for us to do is I'd like for us to go to our paragraph styles. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change this type that we inserted and we're gonna change it to look more like a magazine article. So I'm gonna grab my type tool, I'm gonna to click and I'm gonna 
select all of my type by hitting Command A or Control A. If you don't know how to select all, you can just go to Edit and you, you can hit Select All right here. All right, so once we've selected all of our type, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our paragraph styles. What we're going to do next is we're going to make a new paragraph style. And I'm going to double click on this new paragraph style right here. Double click on it. And we're going to retitle it body text. This is the body text that we would be inserting inside of the columns. We can see right now that it's a left aligned. We want to change a lot of these things. So based on plain text, I'm going to put no paragraph style. Next style, same style. That's fine for me. And basic character formats, we're going to change it to Adobe Garamond. So we can type in Adobe Garamond. And I have Adobe Garamond. We're going to leave it at 10.5. We're going to leave it at regular. And what we're going to do next is we are going to go to our indents and spacing, and we're going to change it to left justify. And then we're going to hit OK. And you'll see that the type kind of changes to look fairly normal, maybe like what we would see in a regular article. Before we move any further, I'd like for us to go to our pages two and three. So let's open our pages here and double click on page two and three. And if you're not centered, we can hit Command Option Zero, or we can hit Control Alt Zero. And we're, we have these both of these pages. And I want us to go to our layers and make sure that this layer is locked so that when we use our arrow tool and we want to move things around, we don't grab that blue box in the background. I'd like for us to go to our first page. Now, if people have a hard time navigating the pages, you can either use your scrolling uh, ball on your mouse to get you from page to page, which I find easy. If that's more confusing to you, you can just use these page numbering. Like, I want to go to page four. I want to go to page one. That might be easiest for you. And if you're not happy with that way, you can always go to pages over here and just double click on each one. Those are all valid ways of navigating around your documents. So what we're going to do next is we're going to grab our type tool. We're going to zoom in. And we zoom in the same way, which is Command plus and what we're going to do is we're going to select our F right here, and we're going to make it a drop cap. Our drop cap is at the top menu. Now make sure you're not on character right here, but you're on paragraph. And we are going to make it five lines, which means that the F will be five lines. Now I'd like for this to be the pink color that we made our fader. So I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to go to my swatches, and I'm going to make it that Pantone that we made it. If you don't like the spacing here, we can always go up to our character tool at the top. And once we click that, we can add more spacing. For example, let's say I want to add a little bit more spacing, and it will add it to all of it. Everybody's seeing that? So it gives that F a little bit more breathing room. Wonderful. Now we have a drop cap. The next step that we're going to do is we're going to add an illustration or an image to this document. What I'd like for us to do is we're going to add a box. We're going to add a rectangle. And we're, let's grab our rectangle tool off to the side, and we're going to click. Except this time, we're going to make it 5 by 5 inches. I hit OK. And we could easily just place an image inside of this box. Now. I want this box to be rotated. I want it to be to look like a diamond. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the top here, and we're going to rotate this box. I'm going to make it 45 degrees. And I'm going to center it, and I'm going to kind of move it down a little bit into the text. So it looks something like this. Now we're going to place an image. And you place an image the same way that you would place text. We hit Command or Control D, or we can go to File and hit place. And so for this one, I'm going to place my head PSD. Go open. And notice it situates it as a uh, sideways. Now, if I hit this little donut in the center here, uh, what I can do is I can change with the position of the image to be at 0. Now, again, we can still mess with that image to make it fit now, if you don't want to hold your shift key 
and drag out, uh, what we can do is I can go to this little box right here, which is fill frame proportionally, and it will fill it pretty well. Now, the wonderful thing about that is, I don't know if anybody can see this, but the image box goes right to the edge of this box, so it's fit pretty well. So the only thing I wanna do is I wanna move it down a little bit so I see a little bit more of that head and a little bit more of those lightning bolts coming out of the eye. So this seems pretty, pretty good to me. Now I want to mess with the line or the linear edge of this box. Uh, I'd like for it to be a thicker line, I'd like for it to be maybe five to seven points. But what I'd like for us to choose next is go to the, the type of line or outline style, and I want us to choose a double thin line. And this should give us a better looking edge. Now, I also want us to affect the corner. So select that box again. And this is our corner options here, and I want to make it an inverse round. This should look more like the original document that I made. Now, I don't like how this image is kind of bleeding into this line. What you can do here is you can go to your stroke over to the right side, and we can choose how this will fit. Notice it fills with this one. If I go to this one, it will shove it to the outside of the line which I think makes it fit more comfortably. Now I'm gonna hit Command-0 so that we're back, or Control-0 so that we're back to seeing the whole spread. Now notice that the text is overlapping the image right now. I want this to be a text-wrapped image, which means that the text would go around this little box here. What we do is we go to our text wrap tool over to the right side, and we hit Wrap Around Box. Now it should wrap around pretty comfortably. I think that it's a good amount of space, but may, if you want to add more space to it, you can add a little bit more space. Since these boxes are linked, it's going to add a little bit of space around all sides of the box. Is everybody kind of seeing that? I think that makes it a little bit more comfortable. So now when we read England in 1995, it reads across a little easier. So the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to add the title. The title of the band for this article is Broadcast. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit our Command D or go to File, Place, and what we're going to do is we are going to add our title PDF. And what I'd like for us to do is if you want to click and drag out, you can, and that will kind of give us more of the size or scaling that we want. Now the interesting thing about InDesign, and people will find this out, is that if I tr drag the box up, it will block out the image. So everything in InDesign is a box within a box. It's very important for us to remember. So if we want to scale this, we have to hit our Command, Enter Shift, or our Control, Enter Shift, if you're on a PC, and scale in. And that will make this the size that we want this to be. And I'm going to just use my arrow keys to kind of get this a little bit bigger and a little bit more aligned. And this looks like how I want it to be. Nice. So if anybody wants to preview this before we move forward, if you hit your Shift W, you can see we can look at this and preview it in the window. And this page looks pretty nice so far. All right. And if you want to get out of that, you just hit Escape. All right. So let's go to our next pages. And I want us to go to page two. So if it's easier for you to go to your pages here, we can go to page two. The next step we're going to do is we're going to make text a little bolder in certain areas. I'd like for us to make headers, and I'd like for us to make quotes. And we're going to use our character styles over to the right side to add a character style. Now I'm going to add a new one, and I'm going to double click on it, and I'm going to title it header. And my intention is to make the text a little bolder. So we're going to make this Adobe Garamond like the rest. We're going to go to our font style, and instead of regular, I'm going to make it bold, and the size is going to be 14 points. And just make sure that your character color is set at black, and I hit OK. So now, when I take my type tool, you can hit T on your keyboard and just select the type, and then we just hit header. It should change the type to being bolder. If we want to go over to the right side, and do the same thing to Haha ha Sound, which is the next chapter. 
we go to header and it should change it as well. And if we go to our last page here, where it says tender buttons 2005, and we hit header, it should give us our bold type. Now, the last thing I wanna do, as far as making a new character style, is I wanna add quotes. So I'm gonna make a new character style, I'm gonna double click on it. I'm not gonna base it on header, I'm gonna base it on none. I'm gonna title it quotes, or you could put quotation. And we're going to go to basic, and we will leave it at Adobe Garamond Bold. You could choose, uh, instead of bold, we could choose something like regular or semi-bold. Um, and what we're gonna do next is we'll go to our character color, and this time we're gonna choose one of these pink colors that we chose before, except I'm gonna double click on it. I'm gonna change it to more of a magenta color, and I'm gonna drop that black down so that's a little more apparent. And I'm gonna add, go add, go done, and I should have this at the bottom. And I go okay. And now when I select type with my type tool, and I wanna make this a quotation, it should make it brighter I'm going to make it on haha -ha sound right here where it says and their early singles and I'm going to hit quotation and we should have a little bit and I'm going to carriage return so it makes it a little bit more space there. So this is what our article is looking like right now. Now I'd like to add some images. I feel like this article is looking a little dry as far as we have some quotes, we have text, we have headers, we have page numbers. Let's add some imagery. So what we're gonna do next is we are gonna to go to our Command-D and we're gonna place an image right here of a head. Hit Command-D or Control-D, or you can go to File Place, and we're gonna grab our Goldsius Face PSD right here. What I'd like for us to do is to drag it and just drop it right about here, and I'm gonna rotate it, and I'd like to make it a little bigger And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add text wrap to it. If you have an image in Photoshop that's been traced out that has a vector edge or a detectable edge, you should be able to text wrap it. Now, if we go to text wrap and we go to our box, it will wrap to our box. If we go to text around a, an object, notice that it doesn't automatically go around my object. It's the same as clipping. Well, it's not reading the clipping. So you might have to tell it to go detect edges. So then InDesign will see the edges. It will also, if you tell it to detect the alpha channels that you generated in Photoshop, it will detect those as well. And that's the actual mask that I made in Photoshop. So after we've done that, what we can do is we can take our tool right here and we can make the text wrap move out a little bit. And I want it to go out a little bit and I might move uh, this box down a little bit just so that it kind of comes in and there we go a little bit further in from the margin but I don't want it to go into the second paragraph next thing I'd like for us to do is to make sure that you only have the image selected and we're gonna add an effect to it we're gonna add drop shadow now I'm not a fan of drop shadows and I'm not a fan of any of these effects like outer glow inner glow bevel but it's nice for you to know. And also you might need to set apart an image or text from one another. And this is a very easy way to do it. And you can make it subtle so that it's not as um, in your face. So we can go to multiply, we can change the opacity. I'm gonna make this a little lighter. We can change the spread. We can change the angle. Notice we can change the angle right there. So I'm gonna make the spread go out. I'm gonna make the spread go out, but I'm gonna make the distance a little bit further in so that it's a little bit softer. Just make sure that your options are set at 1% spread, that your size is at 0.1875, that our distance is at 0 0.0625, and you can, you can fuss with where you put the angle, okay?
we're going to hit OK. And this should give us our drop shadow. Then now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a band photo right about here, like there was in the original. Um, and we're going to text wrap it. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to hit Command-D or Control-D if you're on a PC, and we're going to grab this broadcast band 1 JPEG. And you're more than welcome to choose the other JPEG if you'd like, which is right here, band 2. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to... It wants me to put it inside that text column, and I don't want to, so I'm going to put it outside of that text box. I'm going to drag it out so that it's about right there. Now, if you want to adjust the size, which I do, I hit my Command and my Shift key. Remember that there is, there's a box inside of a box. And we are going to drag that box down to the bottom. And we're going to zoom in. And I'm going to make a shape around these uh, bandmates. All right, once our photograph is in here, I'd like for us to go to our layers and make sure that since the broadcast was put on layer one, that we're going to put our object onto layer one as well. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're, we're going to grab our pen tool and we're going to draw out a picture uh, to trace out the image on the band. So what we're going to do here is just click and drag out and make a path with our pen tool. And yes, you have your, your smart guides, which can be kind of annoying if you're making a less uh, rigid path. And I'm just going to kind of trace these guys out and make kind of a fun little shape. Nothing really precise. And then I'm going to get around Trish up here and, you know, get around her head. And we're going to get down to the shoulder area. And just make sure that we get around the sleeve right here. And I'm going to go right to right here. And I'm going to hold. And make sure you hit your, you zero out. Now I noticed my line is a little inaccurate right there. So I'm going to hit my command key and grab that point. And just make sure it's good and straight. There we go. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab that picture with our black arrow tool. Just make sure you're selecting the picture. And if you're uncertain, you can go to layers and you can see that I'm selecting my JPEG there. And you can either hit Command or Control X, or you can cut it. And I'm going to cut it out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that line. Now, if you don't like clicking on the line because you're afraid you're going to click on the text, you can always just hit Path over here. And then we're going to go to Paste Into. And it should paste into that object. Now, I'm noticing that that path is kind of wonky, and I don't like the shape of the path. I don't want to have a stroke on it. And the path looks a little funky. So I'm going to zoom in. And the kind of cool thing now is even with it inside that path, I can go in and hit this. And, and I can you know, make sure that this is a little less funky. And I can fix these points right here. Fix these points right here. And maybe I'll make them a little nicer. All right. So that looks pretty good to me. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to text wrap this object. Um, what we do is we go to our text wrap, and it's going to give us some funky options. Now look at this. Look at how it's filling. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spread it out. Um, a little bit more, except I don't want it to fill this little area here. So what we can do is we can wrap to the left side. So everybody kind of seeing that? That gives us a better looking wrap. And let's check out our spread. Hit Command Option 0 or Control Alt 0. And this is what our article should be looking like. Now if you want to look at it much more clearly, click your black arrow into open space, and we're going to hit our Shift W. And this is what this spread is looking like. So our article is looking pretty good right now. We need to go to our last page and kind of do some adjustments. And let's hit Escape. And let's work on this last page. Now I don't want Tinder buttons to be 
this pink. I wanted it to be that character style, which was the header, and that should be correct now. All right, so let's go and let's make, we're gonna make a table on the back side. Well, to make a table, we have to drag out a text box. I'm gonna drag out a text box. Now it has to snap into the space. And once it's in here, we can hit insert table. And we want it to be two rows and four columns. And we hit okay. And it should give us what looks like these skinny little uh, rows and these wider columns. I'd like for us to take, notice we have these arrow keys. They will allow us to affect this table, almost like a Excel document. We can also get it from the top so that we're affecting certain parts of the table. It's kind of neat. It allows us to work with more things at one time. So I'd like, if we click the corner, we click all of it. And I'd like for us to click all of it. And notice up here, it shows the size of the small rows and it shows the size of the width of the boxes and I'd like for us to make the size um, at least 1.75 so that they're square. Oops. And once we're done I would like for us to kind of start affecting the inside of the box. Now to affect the inside of the box we have to select these little marks. The marks are stand-ins for what we want to affect. So I want to affect these cross lines in the middle. I want them to be bigger. I want them to be about seven points. And that looks about right. So now I have to make all of the exterior none, which means that there will be no line on the exterior. All right. So that's what our box looks like right now. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna start kind of coloring the box before we start placing in images. So I'm going to take my type tool again, I'm going to grab that corner, and what we can do is go to table up here and go to cell options. And I'd like for us to go to strokes and fills. So the way I want these strokes to look is I'd like for them to be white. And the strokes are the ones on the inside. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it so we have just the strokes on the inside. Notice it says it's black. I would like for them to be paper. I'd like for them to be white. Now for our cell options, the color cell, which is what fills in the inside, I'd like for it to be one of those pink colors that we chose from our Pantone, except I'd like for the tint to be about 30%. And we hit okay. So this is what our table should look like. And this should be very similar to our table and our final results that you have in your PDF. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start placing images in this table. Now, remember that this is controlled with our type tool. So if I want to control this box, I can start typing in type right here. If I want to select the next box, I can start putting in type there, much like an Excel document. Um, it's a very useful tool. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna select this box, the first box, and I'm gonna add a picture to it. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did before to add images, we're gonna hit Command D, and I'm gonna grab my first album, which is Buttons. I'm gonna open it and I'm gonna place it. Now, uh, you might not like the way that the images fit into the box. You can select the box. Now remember, we have to grab our type tool. Selecting that box won't do much. We actually have to select that box to affect it. So if we wanna add some inset spacing, notice I'm adding some inset spacing here, we can do that. Now to, again, to affect the box, to make it fit in this little space, notice that it's kind of chopping off the photograph. We can go to auto fit or fit proportionally, and then the album will fit precisely into that box. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna do each one, I'm gonna hit my command D, and I'm gonna add a new album and hit OK. And I'd like for us to do the same thing, grab our type tool and uh, we're gonna drag across it, kind of like you would uh, to highlight something. And then we're going to inset it a little bit. And we're gonna to try to make it same as the first one, which is 0.1875. And we're gonna hit fit proportionally. 
and we're going to do the same thing on the next one. We're going to hit Command D, then we're going to hit the next album, hit Open, and we're going to do the same thing. Grab our Type tool, highlight it, oops, highlight it, and then I'm going to make it hit 0.1875, and then I'm going to auto fit it. And then we'll do our last one. And I hit Command D. And where's the last one? Over here, album three. They might be out of order, but that's OK. And then grab our type tool, highlight it, and then we can change the size over here as well. And auto fit. And this should be looking more balanced here in our table. Now, what I'd like for us to do at the bottom is to add some text. Now, I don't want to get very detailed about this, but I want us to add some text to this little box. Now, you could easily just hit your cursor in there, and I would like to change my type to Gil Sands. Uh, and since we are having, most of us have Gil Sands Nova, I'm going to do book. Hit broad. Broadcast Tinder Buttons is a psychedelic mastery of fifties Joe Meek to the 80s suicide. And I have a little bit of text in there, and I can treat the text the same way I'd treat the other forms of text. And maybe I want this, I would want this to be much smaller, something like nine point type. Uh, and maybe I want it to be inset space as well. So maybe I want to select this whole. Uh, box the same way, and maybe I want to inset space it the same way um, so that the type is consistent with uh, the, the the box at the top. And maybe I want to let out this type. So maybe I want to space it out a little bit. You can also choose some type up from here, and that's what I'm going to have you guys do for this version. And let's grab that, and we're going to copy it and paste it. And then what I'd like for us to do is again to make it Gil Sands. Sands. And notice the box gets bigger as I make text bigger. Now if I make it smaller, it will stay the same size because the boxes adapt to the size of text much like an Excel document. Uh, so it does change the control of the box size. It adapts. But we are going to control the text to fit the frame. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to book and I'm going to hit nine point like the other one and then I'm going to uh, let it out just a little bit and I'm going to inset space it. Remember we have to select the whole box to inset space and Maybe I'll only set space to there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to copy and paste it because I don't have the proper type for these. Uh, so we're going to just copy and paste. And we're going to do the same thing that we did before. Select it and inset to 0.1875. And we're going to paste it and inset space to Point one eight seven five. So this is how your band article would look. Again, this page is still a little funky. It's not really oriented properly. And so let's look at it real quick. Now, make sure that you're deselected off to the side and let's hit Shift W. I notice there's a lot of white space at the bottom here and that this table looks a little funky. Like there's a little bit, it's a little bit too close to the text boxes up at the top. So what I'd like for us to do is shift it downward, but in a proper way in which it stays within the text frame. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to hit escape, we're going to grab our arrow tool, and we're going to select that box. The next thing that we want to do is we want to affect the text box so that it shifts this table downwards. Now the way that we're going to do that is we're going to adjust its position. And we can go to object up at the top, and we can go to text frame options. But I like for you guys to remember this command B because it's going to be very useful uh, and a useful tool in understanding how to put or add inset spacing. So for example, I just want to affect the top here and I want to inset space it and make sure that you hit preview so that we can see what's going on. And I want to make it about 0.5. And that should make it more equal. Now, if we look at that and preview it, notice that we have a little bit more equal space there. And let's say you wanted to make some typographic rule in there and I hit my pen tool right about here and I hold my shift key and let's say I want to make this like you know 0.25 and I want to make it that blue color that we used earlier um, you know and then maybe this would kind of add another design element and if I hit shift W you know I have these like subtle markers and this is what our finished article should look like so at the end here, what we're going to do before we finish up is we are going to go to our file up at the top and we are going to save as and we're going to save it to our article demo. You can save it there and we can say example and then JT, my initials, and we can save it as an InDesign document. Um, I'm going to save that there and then I'm also going to export to the same folder, a PDF in print. And I'm gonna do the same thing, example, JT. Now it's gonna pop up and it's gonna give me all these options. Just make sure that you hit spreads so that I see your spread as a spread, much like how we're viewing InDesign. And you could put bleed marks if you want, um, just to show that you did all that work, but it's not necessary. Um, and we're gonna hit export in it. There is some overset text. Uh, there's some overset images as well. And I'm going to hit OK. And then you can X out of it. You should be done. Now, if you go to your desktop here, you should be able to see your example JT. And if I hit Command L, you should be able to see your example. All right. Good luck.